Hey there and welcome back. So in this video we're going to create the basis for the image you see, creating the terrain and do some initial scattering. It will be a good opportunity to learn Houdini basics, from for loops to height fields and also some simple vex. Let's start by creating a night field, changing the dimensions and apply some initial noise. Blurring a bit the result as we don't need the detail for this part. We need to somehow divide the terrain, the back hills and the fields in front. So I'm creating a line positioning in the center and also copy the width of the height field and add a small value to it. I also want the back hills to be around 40% of the entire terrain, so let's copy the depth of the height field and position the line 10% from the center. Adding a point cheater to procedurally shape the line and only displacing along the z-axis. When you're happy with the shape, add a resample, mostly to smooth out the curve with the subdivision curves option. Now let's create a mesh from this curve by doing a few extrusions and mirroring the results at the end. We will use this to mask the height field, but also to cut the geometry later. Load the mesh we just created in, the, in an object merge and do a mask by object. Now we have a mask to separate the different sections of the terrain. Add a night field noise and play a bit with the attributes. We want to create some small mountains in the back. You will also need to blur the mask to ease the transition. After blurring a bit the result we can start to play with some erosion, I am not changing much, only the overall amount. I also want to distort a bit the result with a low frequency. Here I'm just going back as I am not yet happy with the result, mostly changing the seed of the or offset of the noise. Let's now create a path on our terrain by using a more traditional way, drawing a curve. Resample the curve to smooth out the points. And let's project it on our terrain with a ray and create a mesh with a sweep. Now we can create a mask from the path. Having the mask we can carve the road on the terrain by using a night field project. We will need a negative transform in the Y to carve the pets and also play with the combined methods of the projection. Let's save this mask to a layer using the copy layer node. We will also need a mask for the sides of the road to scatter some trees around. So let's expand the road mask and subtract the original mask from it. We need also to save it to a new layer to use later. As the transition is a bit harsh between the road and the terrain, let's manipulate a bit the masks to blur that transition. And finally we can convert the height field to a mesh. Ok, let's move on by creating a boolean between the back shape and the terrain. 
In the next step we will use a Voronoi fracture to divide the front part into fields, so start by scattering a few points for the fracture. We want to disable create interior surfaces in the Voronoi, and now we have the base for our fields. Around the different patches I want to scatter some bushes, so let's group the unshared edges and convert them into curves. We will need to fuse the points and then create a mesh from it. But as you can see we have double geometry, so let's go back and fuse the unshared edges group we created. Ok, now I want to mask this sweep mesh on the terrain, but let's make sure we ray project the mesh, as by now it's flat. Alright, moving to the last part of this long tutorial, I want to divide the pieces from the Voronoi into different groups, so I can scatter different meshes later. Let's pack the geometry with the assemble node. Now we will need a bit of X to create a random index of the packed primes, courtesy of Glenimus Prime user on Reddit. Basically, we're creating an attribute with some controls for the number of groups we want and also the uh, seed value. Let's group by attribute to visualize what we've done. Now we can use a name to transform the groups into an attribute, I'm realizing now that maybe I don't need these much steps, but it was the way that, that it was working for me. Let me know in the comments how would you have done it. Promoting the point attribute to primitive so we can use it in the next step. Now we will use a for loop to scatter different meshes into the three groups of fields we created before. We want to change the method to extract piece or point. Make sure you set the name attribute in the loop end node, piece attribute. I made a small mistake before the, the loop, but we will fix it in a bit. For now, let's unpack the geometry and combine the road masks so we can feed it to the density attribute on the scatter. We will also need a metadata node to use the iteration or index of the loop. And before correcting the small mistake I made, let's invert the mask as we want to scatter outside the road. The missing part here is in the name attribute. We need to set the class to point and not primitives. Let's create uh, three scatters for the three groups we have and use the mask we just combined as density. Now we need a way to select the different scatter node at each iteration. So using a switch node feeding it the iteration attributes should do the trick. And we can use a copy to points and place different objects at each group of patches. Let's reuse the switch node and place a few different colored boxes for now. Finally, let's combine the result with the original terrain and we are done with the fields. The only thing left to do is to scatter some bushes around the patches and trees on the road sides. So let's start with the curves we had before and split it with a polypad. I am doing this because I want to remove some of the back lines. Creating a shape from it and scattering a few points, making sure we remove the ones on the road. Lastly, with the copy to points, we can insert a few boxes for now.
The only thing left to do is to distribute some trees on the sides of the road. Create a cylinder and place it on the grid with the H script code YMIN. Scatter a few points on the road sides and use a copy to points to instance the tube. Let's just make the trees face up by setting the normal attribute. And the very last step is to rotate the tube so it sits up. And that's everything I wanted to share with you for now. Hopefully you learned something new, I certainly did doing this small project. And the next step is to take everything we've done to Solaris context and do some shading, lighting and rendering. Let me know if you would be interested in that. Thank you and see you in the next one.